All right. Welcome to SAS Bytes. Uh, I forgot my lower third again. One of, one of those days. Um, I am Mike Godbolt. This is SAS Bytes, your weekly bite of SAS during your lunch break. You can follow us at uh, SAS Bytes on Twitter and catch up on uh, previous episodes at youtube.com slash SAS Bytes. Uh, we just finished up our road to SASConf uh, these last few weeks, four or five weeks. Uh, a great series. You can, uh, can catch um, some personal interviews with a lot of the speakers that are they're actually speaking today at SASConf. It's right now going on uh, in uh, in New York City. Uh, you can catch a lot of their tweets on Twitter with uh, hashtag SASConf14 for 2014. A uh, bunch of great stuff coming up, and I might even have to dive into that uh, in a little bit because there's some great news coming from that. But today we're going to start a new project. Uh, we're going to start a new what I'm planning on being a, a very multi uh, multi episode series uh, in which we're going to be basically building a new site. And I've been wanting to do this for a while, and I've actually had an opportunity to do it because I'm going to be giving this talk at a SAS Summit uh, coming up in November, I think November 5th or something like that. Um, you know, putting it all together, like all these pieces I've been talking about for the last uh, year and a half. Um, let's put it together in a project. Let's see how these things are going to look. Let's see how these, these tools are going to work and interact together. Uh, and then uh, actually have something to show for it. I have a repo that you can download and take a look at. So um, in doing that, the first thing I want to do is um, is take a look at our build system. Uh, and I'm going to give myself a quick retweet here as well. Uh, is take a look at our build system. Um, when I'm looking at, uh, looking at front end architecture, uh, there's four things uh, that I talk about. Um, one of them being um, good, uh, good structure, uh, good structure in your markup, in your file structure, in your, your SAS structure, basically code style co code organization. Uh, the second one being a style guide. Uh, the third one being visual uh, regression testing uh, with something um, like um, uh, Wraith.js or Diffuse or those kind of things. Uh, and the fourth one being automation. Um, automation is a really important thing if you want a good, fast workflow, if you want to be able to onboard other people into your project really easily. And so we're actually going gonna to start from there because, um, uh, because automation uh, and things like Grunt, which we're talking about today, are kind of the glue that hold everything together, that allow you to pull all these pieces together into not just a bunch of disparate tools, but into something that actually works together um, to make uh, a finished product. And I might have a cat jumping in my lap uh, at any second, uh, so I'm going to change video so you don't see his tail. All right. I know you love cats, though, so maybe I, maybe I get better ratings with it. Um, so uh, present to everyone. We're good. So what we're going to be doing today is we're going to do a really quick um, jump into uh, Grunt. It's, it's not going to get into all the craziness. We're going to save that for the next week, maybe the week after. But if you've never used Grunt before, how can you get started? And I want to demystify a couple things uh, that are sometimes really difficult to wrap. Uh, I know for me, wrap my brain around. As I came back to this project, I'm like, how does this thing work again? So I want to go over those. Um, a few housekeeping things. Um, open up your terminal, because hopefully at this point you're comfortable with your terminal. Um, and I want you to do a Node-V. Uh, this is checking if you have um, uh, Node installed. Now, we're not writing Node. We're not going to be running a bunch of Node servers. Uh, but Node and the Node Packet Manager are, are an essential tool, essential part of Grunt. Um, and we'll kind of take a look at that here in a little bit as well. But you need to have Node installed. If you don't have Node installed, uh, Node I'm sure it's probably node.js org. You can go here and install it. It is a locally installed item, so it's not just some package you're going to pull in or something like that. Um, I don't know if, if um, Homebrew does it or not, but anyway, it, it is something you need to get installed. You will get stopped if you don't get there. Um, a couple other things we are going to, to be using eventually. Um, it's just mostly housekeeping for later. Uh, gem install um, a bundler is a dependency management tool that we're going to be using. Um, probably not going to get to it today, but we're definitely going to use it for next week. So if you don't have that gem install bundler, um, that helps with dependencies for gems. So to make sure we have all the, the proper gems. So boom, looks like there's a new version. It's now installed. We're good to go. Uh, the other thing you're going to definitely need to do is install Grunt. Now, that's going to be, um, uh, as I said, Node Packet Manager is the packet manager tool that Node uses, kind of obvious, uh, for basically pulling together all the pieces of, of of mostly JavaScript that are going to be required to run stuff within Node. Um, so the first thing we're going to need to do is grunt CLI. So npm install dash g. Uh, this means it's going to install it globally. It means it's going to actually install grunt CLI uh, command line interface, grunt CLI onto your computer itself. This means you only have to do it once. 
And once it's done, you don't have to do it for all your subsequent projects, but you definitely need to have this and you need to have it installed locally so you can type things like grunt because that it needs to be installed locally so you can do those types of commands. So we're going to go do that. And this is what, if you don't have Node installed, this is going to completely break on you. So make sure you have Node first. So that's installed. Um, one other optional that you can install, you can do it either way. Um, we're going to be using one more package manager, because who knows, we need more package managers, right? Um, is Bower. So npm install dash g Bower. I'm going to bring that up again one second. Um, Bower is a, a bit more of a, um, a source agnostic um, package manager uh, that's great for, the, there it is right there, npm install dash g Bower. Um, it's great for Git repos and really just pulling code from anywhere. Uh, so a great example is um, we're going to be eventually using a um, style guide called Hologram. Hologram's a gem, so that's fine. We can we can do that with the, with Bundler, uh, but it uses a theme uh, called Cortana, um, and Cortana is a Git repo off somewhere on this other you know in GitHub. Um, and instead of downloading that and putting it in, into our repo and committing that, we can actually use Bower just to pull down a copy whenever we need one. So if someone else you know gets our project. Uh, Bower will go out and grab a copy of that and pull it down. It helps with versioning, uh, lots of things. Um, it just makes it a lot easier to have Bower handle that rather than having all of these JavaScript packages and all these other code packages in uh, uh, actually committed into your system. So all those things installed, uh, you should be good to go. So we've got um, some real basic stuff set up here in our project. We've got an index file because I want to be able to show you what the stuff looks like when it's done. Um, I'll get to this live, live reload script. Um, that's going to be necessary to do live reload. Um, we've got a blank grunt file, because uh, that's just set in place for us to put stuff into. And I just have a real simple, a real simple little uh, SAS project where I'm importing Compass, because I'm going to show that we can use Compass. And we've got a variable, and we're just using the variable to, um, to make a background. And we are um, uh, including a, a rotate. And that's a, that's a Compass rotate. I just want to show that we actually are properly importing Compass, and Compass will work. So, and this is the output right over here. So we've got I'm a div, uh, which obviously is not doing anything yet because we haven't done it. So the next things we need to do um, is this is going to be uh, basically setting up grunt. Uh, the grunt file JS is one element, and that's just a blank file with grunt file.js as a name. But the other thing we need to do is npm init, and this is going to initialize our node project. And this is actually, this isn't a grunt specific thing, but this is something that you need to do for a grunt project, really for any node project. And what this is going to do is going to walk you through a, um, uh, a little uh, wizard, basically, um, to fill, to, to create the manifest, to, to create your, um, your package.json file, which is one of the, the, the tools you're going to need, or one of the files you're going to need. So we can give it a different name if we want to. We can give a different version and description and um, entry point. So if you have it in a deeper folder, um, it just needs to know where that grunt file is. Um, and I guess maybe it is grunt related. Anyway, um, test command, honestly, I have no idea. I haven't really played around with a lot of this, but it just it fills out this file. When you're done, it's going to look like that. And it creates for us this package.json. Um, this is the place that you're going to tell Node what packages you need to use. So um, it's really similar if you use Bundler. It's really similar to your gem file. It's really similar if you use Bower to your Bower.json file. Again, it's JSON. So it just, just describes the dependencies for the project. Um, and so let's add some dependencies to it right now. We're just going to do two of them right now. Um, we're going to do Compass and a, um, a, a, um, a contrib module called Watch. Um, and let me um, let me actually let me show you this real quick. Um, grunt uh, uh, compass. That's what we're doing. There's a SAS version. There's a compass version. Uh, we're going to use compass, so we're going to dive in there. Um, this is the GitHub repo, and it's going to talk to you all about like different settings and all that. It's a great place to jump if you need to do a lot of changes. Uh, but we're going to just do some real basics. But this is where it's coming from. So it's actually going out and grabbing the code right from here. So let's do this. We're going to do npm install. Uh, let me just type it all out. npm install. Contrib compass. So that's going to install uh, this package into our project. Now there's one more thing we need to do, and it's just it's a simple flag. It's called save dev. Really a pain in the butt to remember. I save in the developer. It doesn't make a whole bunch of sense. But what this does is basically say this is a this is a package that needs to be put into our into our dependencies. So um, if we do that, it's going to go out and grab everything. Uh, it's going to go to the registry of npm and go to the files and all that kind of stuff. 
And real quick, you'll see in our package.json file that it's added grunt contrib compass here. This is the version of it. Uh, and we can talk about some of these things in a bit, but it pulls that in, as well as says that, that uh, grunt is a dependency as well, because um, uh, grunt contrib compass has a dependency of grunt, so it pulls both of them in. Real quick, looking at this, you'll see there's a new folder in here, here called node modules, and it has grunt, so it pulled in all of, that all of the grunt needs, and I'm sure there's a bunch in there if we dove in. And here's the contrib compass. Um, it's got a package.json, hey, that's familiar, that basically explains what's inside of it. It's got tasks, and it's got modules of its own. Uh, so that's all the code that gets brought in. Point is, you really don't have to worry about that. You shouldn't be looking at it. You definitely don't want to be changing it. That's just the code that the project's going to use uh, to run these tasks. Um, and part of it is we're, not, we're also going to eventually, when we commit this, we're going to ignore that folder. because we definitely don't want to be committing that to our repo. The point is that every time that we come into the project, all we want to be able to do is run a single command and pull all of those dependencies into our project. We'll probably do that next week, um, uh, showing how we can real quickly get uh, bootstrapped into a new project um, just by pulling down the bare kind of bare bones of the project. So that's the first one we need to do is contrib compass. And the second one we need is contrib watch. This is a watcher. This allows you to, um, uh, similar with compass, where you can do a compass watch. So you can be watching folders and files. And when something changes, you can perform actions. Uh, it also comes with live reload. So it kind of has everything we need to basically finish up um, everything we need to do today. So I'm going to install that. And you see a couple things change. You'll see our watch comes in here as a dependency. And you'll also see watch goes in here as well. So that's what that does. So um, it basically means that now if we do an npm install, I believe, um, to current starter. Yeah, um, I'll, have to, I'll double check. I didn't test that one. For sure, it's npm install. Well, um, we'll go out and grab any necessary nodes or packages to be, be able to be pulled down. Um, I'll make sure that's ready to go live next time so you can pull the repo down and do it yourself. But that's the idea, is that all these dependencies are in there. You can do a single command, and it'll pull them all down for you. So let's move on to the next part, which is the gruntfile.js. Um, this is probably the one that's going to take the most bit of explaining, um, walking through all the different steps to it. So I'm going to copy, because there's no way I'm going to write all this, no way I'm going to write it properly. So here's my grunt file. I'm going to paste this in. Um, I'm only doing 58 lines, which is a nice small one. Um, I like to keep it small when I start so that I can like kind of just grok what's going on uh, and understand what all the pieces are. And let's go ahead and walk through a few of them. Um, this first chunk up top, this is pretty much standard. This is boilerplate. Um, use strict as JavaScript thing. A module that exports is just kind of how you put everything into um, into Grunt. Um, and then we're going to do a Grunt config. Uh, and this package, I think it's just pointing to where that package.json is. So um, that's a, a basically going to be the same every time you start a new project. You can get into probably some really custom setups where that stuff starts changing. But for most people starting fresh, that's what's going to be. Here's where you get to start writing stuff. So our first one we're going to do, what we're first going to do is we're going to set up all of our different, um, uh, all of our different modules, because uh, all the modules take settings. And when you go into here, you can see all the different settings of CSS directory, specify, images directory, JavaScript directory. These are all different options and settings that you can pass into the module. So let's go in and look at just the basic ones that I have set up. So um, uh, actually, let's do compass first, because watch is kind of dependent on that. I should have switched the order. Um, so we're going to um, we're going to set up the compass um, uh, the compass module. So the first thing is we have an options array, and again these are just a bunch of JavaScript arrays or objects or sorry objects yeah they're objects. So um, one thing we can do is we can set our SAS directory and our CSS directory. That's really all we need to be able to run compass, um, and then we can uh, we can specify a couple different environments. Um, Compass usually does this as like you know development and production. We can kind of emulate that as well. Emulate uh, environment that will actually pass that down to Compass. Um, and we'll just set different output styles. So we can run Compass in Developer, which gives us expanded, or we can run it as our distribution, which gives us a, a compact output. So uh, we have the options when we run Compass to choose which one we want to do, and we'll do that. Uh, I'll show that down at the bottom just a little bit. Um, our watch setup. We, uh, we can set um, our watch up for different um, uh, kind of like different file action combinations. 
So we can have uh, we can have watch looking at our SAS files for changes and run Compass. We can have watch looking at um, say like our CSS file, and when that changes, it'll run our style guide. We can have it looking at JavaScript, and when that changes, it can run our CSS our JavaScript linting. So that's uh, you have multiple entries for um, for watch for each one of those. We just have one, so we're just going to do that. Um, we've got our files uh, setting, which is basically saying, you know, where are we looking for changes? We're looking in the SAS directory, and we're looking for anything uh, that ends with S, uh, um, SCSS. Uh, any, any file, any folder, go as deep as you want. If there's any changes in there to any of those files, then we have a task. Actually, you can do multiple tasks, but we just have one. We're going to run Compass. And we're going to run the developer version of Compass. And that's the expanded one, remember. So this colon is where we can change that. If we really wanted to have it to be distribution, we could change it right there. And it would run the distribution one instead. So it would run with the um, uh, with a uh, compacted, um, compressed, compact. All right, a couple more things. We've got live reload. Um, I'm passing one option to live reload. Um, I believe you have to at least pass it true. Uh, but you can also pass it a port number. Um, I'm choosing a different port number because sometimes I have a live reload um, application running, and that's using uh, the default um, port that, that this tries to use, so there's a conflict. So I just choose a different port, uh, and my lead speak is awesome, so of course I do choose that. Um, and so that's the port that it's going to use um, uh, to, to basically talk to the browser. So if you have any problems with ports, you just need to change the port right there. All right. And then live reload takes not only options, but also takes files. So what files are we looking for changes in? And when there are those changes, um, uh, that's going to trigger the live reload. So look at the CSS. When the CSS changes, live reload. When JavaScript changes, live reload. If we ever change an image, live reload. So I want those things to change. So you can add more to there. I know I do that with, um, uh, we'll end up doing that with the style guide as well. You know, If there's ever a change to the style guide files, live reload, all those kind of things. So we've set up our two packages, um, our, our two modules. We've set up Watch, and we've set up Compass. A couple of things we have to do, this is kind of a house cleaning one. We need to make sure we load these tasks, uh, load NPM tasks. And you just want to pass in these, uh, basically the names of the contrib modules right there. So grunt contrib Compass, grunt contrib Watch. If you don't have it, it doesn't work. I don't know the technical behind it, but have those in there. <laughs> Otherwise, it doesn't work. All right, this last part right down here is where we can define tasks. Um, and you can have multiple tasks. We could do a default task, which is what happens if you just type grunt. Um, and yeah, I just want to make sure I'm not doing this in the right place. We can also have a pony task. And when you do pony, it does uh, distribution, whatever. Or throw other things in there as well, because we can add more and more tasks to it. But you can define as many of them as you want. Um, and heck, I can even show that. So now that we have those all in there and in the magical world of live demos, what I should be able to do back uh, on the command line is type grunt. Now what grunt is going to do, it's going to go and look for my default task because I'm not passing a task. Otherwise, I can say grunt pony, and that'll do the, the pony task. Um, so it's going to look for the default task, and it's going to run the tasks that are inside of it. So it's going to run compass dev, and then it's going to watch. So it's going to compile the SAS. And then it's going to watch for further changes. And if there's changes, it'll compile SAS again. So you want to make sure you have the Compass Dev first. Um, otherwise, you're just going to be watching. And you're like, hey, do something. And then you hit Save. Then it does something. And it's just a little bit annoying. So let's go ahead and give this a run and see if we get any errors. Sweet. All right. So um, so you can see a couple things. You can see the tasks that I can get printed out here. So it's running Compass Dev. and. Uh, CSS directory, and it writes this file out. It even shows how long it took to write the file. And we can go up here. We can see it actually created the directory and actually created output. So this is great. So we now know, looking at our style, because we've got we're passing a variable in, we're using compass, that we've got background of blue. That variable got passed in. And compass is spinning out this rotate um, just perfectly. Um, um, Live reload. That's the only question of what's not working on that. <laughs> I'll see if I can get that one working. I might have to just refresh it once, and that works. So let's try. Um, uh, yeah, let's try to make a change and see if this if this works properly. I got reload, live reload working earlier. And uh, warnings, compass div. What in the world does do? Um, <laughs> really? 
Ah, gotta love these. What did I just do? I'm sure if I took five seconds, I could figure it out. Compass dash. It's weird. All right. The joys of it was just working before, and why is it stopping now? Compass dash div. All right, so I gotta figure that out. Um, let's get rid of this in case that's causing the issue. Uh, copy and paste. It's one of those days. All right, let's try it one more time. Mm, okay, um, let's try blue. I got to figure out what that is all about. Required config property, compass, div. Let me see. Yeah, dev. Someone's probably going to ping me eventually and go, oh, you missed a comma, you idiot. Um, oh, this was working just perfectly before. And so I need to track down why it's not working now, which is really annoying when I'm doing this live. So, um, and that just kills my live reload at the end. So this will get live reload going. Um, I'll post this as a Git repo here eventually so you can take a look at it. And um, I'm sure as soon as I hang up, I will find out what I did wrong. And someone probably already tweeted at me. Um, this is killing me. Live reload, one, three, three, seven, options, files. What did I do? Let me copy and paste it over one more time and see if I just accidentally did something wrong. New strict. All right. Hey, I must have just deleted something. So we'll do import. Um, actually, we'll just back this up. There we go. What happens when you start making changes in the middle of a process? I must have comma, colon, something. That's why you never change things than while you do it live. So there we go. So what we're doing is we are running Compass, and then we're watching. And when we watch, we're going to be watching for any changes in the SAS files. And if there's changes in the SAS files, it's going to run Compass again. And if there's any changes to the CSS files, it's going to it's going to live reload. So if I do color white, because he wants black on a blue background, it's going to compile its ass and it's going to live reload on my page. So there it is. Oh, the one thing I to mention in here, so this script file you do need to have in here. And you do need to have a matching port. This will go um, directly into live reload and it'll grab a little JavaScript snippet that's required for this to work. Um, there's other ways to get the snippet in there, depending on the, the tool you're using. I know Drupal often has it already in there. But if you're just doing this real quick, that little JavaScript snippet is what kind of makes the magic work. Um, so you don't actually have to have you know live reload plugin plugin going or anything like that. Um, so um, yeah, so that's it. A small foible, uh, as apparently I can't edit things without breaking them today. Um, but that will get us um, a project that's set up with Grunt that when we, if someone else was to pull it down and hit npm install, it would just pull everything that you needed, all the packages you need to go, and you can hit grunt, and you'd be up and running. So I'll do that next week. I'll have that, that, um, that Git repo ready to pull down and get going. Um, but that's our basics. That gives us the tools that we need to compile SAS, live reload, and then extend beyond that. There's a ton of modules we're going to be able to install into here uh, to run pretty much all the different tools that we need to do, um, all from a single interface. We can build more commands and do all that crazy stuff. So um, thanks for sticking around. Um, uh, yeah, keep watching over the next several weeks. Um, we're basically going to just keep building up this project until we have a, an actual page with some good markup, with some really good OO uh, style um, components, um, try and get as many best practices in there as possible. And you can see it as we put the thing together and, and pull the repo down as we use it as well. So should be a lot of fun. should be a good learning experience. Um, and yay for um, <laughs> having issues during live demos. So um, uh, check this out. I'll put throw this up on GitHub pretty soon, um, hopefully within the next day or so, so you can pull it down, npm install, and grunt yourself. So um, tweet if you have any questions. I know I kind of through, flew over a bit of that, uh, but we'll see you next week as we continue down this process and add some more features to Grunt. So thanks again for watching, and we'll see you next week. Bye.